Hi, how you doing? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CEO of Longcore Gold, John Barker. How you doing today, John? Rich, I am wonderful. Thanks very much. And a pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure having you on the show. Very excited to learn more about your company and introduce it to our community of investors from all over the world. And I have a few questions for you. First one, John, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with Longcore Gold Inc.? Yeah, well, uh, quite a while back, I was a mining analyst based out of the UK, and uh, I did that for a number of years, ended up as an MD at the Royal Bank of Canada, and uh, went down, specialized in African stocks, but also the diamond sector and other things. And then I sort of had enough of the banking world to move back out at, uh, at a high level to uh, a couple of Canadian listed companies, Southern Era and Gino, and both of those were uh, taken out. Um, so I've seen many juniors come and go uh, from that point of view, and um I suppose during that time, um, I bumped into Arnie Kondrat, who's the previous CEO of uh, Longcore Gold and the major shareholder. So uh, I've known uh, Arnie from, for many years, and uh, it was about just under two years ago, he approached me and said, would I like to join the team? So um, I said, sure, let's, let's, let's see if it works out. So I joined them, and then uh, lo and behold, about 14 months later, um, he offered me the position of CEO, and he moved uh, to become executive chairman. And that's uh, how I find myself where I am today and uh, looking forward to the next couple of years. an exciting time. Absolutely. We really believe here at Rich TV Live that gold is undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed at these levels right now, that there's so much opportunity right now for junior miners. So what makes Longcore Gold a standout in the highly competitive junior gold mining space? Well, I suppose the top line is we've got 4.6 million ounces of resources that we control. That's, I mean, if you look wow. at the current gold price, uh, it's around $8 billion. Wow. But it's one project now. Uh, if I was to say, name what's uh, the future of the company, it's the project called Adumbi. That's 3.2 million ounces of resources, around $6 billion sitting in the ground. And we've just, we've got just under 85% of it. Um, it's grown really rapidly, and, and that's one of the reasons that you haven't heard it because it's caught many observers and analysts uh, uh, you know, off guard, especially, I suppose, as COVID has, has kept them at home, and uh, they don't yet realize the potential that's uh, aggressively growing. We believe it can keep growing its ounces, but that's only half the story. The ounces are just half the story. It's the grade. Uh, I mean, in other words, the revenue per ton that you're going to get out, um, it's around double the uh, peer group in West and East wow. Africa where we're operating. So that's what really makes it outstanding. It's that combination. And uh, taking it further, um, at Adumbi, if you imagine we've got $6 billion sitting there in the ground, you've still got to do a lot to it, obviously. But if you assume, let's say, 50% operating margins for such a quality project, then you've got around $3 billion of value. If you assume geological or metallurgical losses of, let's say, 20%, I'm just pulling figures out here, and you're still looking around $2.5 billion. Yeah, it's not going to be mined for a number of years, let's say four or five years, and you must apply a discount um, on the cash flow, et cetera. But our current market cap versus a figure like that um, is $80 million for our 85% holding. So um, you can see a huge disjoint in uh, what we believe is the underlying value of this project and our current market cap, with hopefully many more ounces to be found at depth below the pit. Wow, that's extremely impressive. A baby market cap with literally billions of dollars of ounces of gold. That's, that, that's impressive. Now, with what appears to be a developing world-class deposit emerging, which you've discussed, what gives you confidence you can make it happen in the area of the DRC that you operate. Yeah, well, I suppose there's a number of things, but if I'm just going to pick three things. Looking at the DRC itself, it's becoming a real focus for uh, big companies. Already there's various Chinese companies operating. Ivanhoe Mining uh, is very successful there, Glencore, et cetera, as they realize the potential is sitting in the DRC. And in fact, uh, BHP is the most recent major to suggest they're starting to look in the uh, DRC. Wow. So that's the one thing is the DRC is uh, really uh, emerging and uh, it's a wonderful place uh, for geologists and companies to get involved. The second thing that gives us confidence is that 130 miles away, which isn't far in the DRC because it's a big country, and 130 miles away from our Dumby project, Barrick manages the Kibali gold mine. And uh, it's not just any mine, but it's Africa's largest gold miner. 
and it's mined there since 2013. So within relative close proximity, they've been there and they've uh, developed this world-class project. Similar grades in the pit at, uh, at Barrick's mine to what we're finding at Adumbi, which is great for us. And it's a real star performer for Barrick year after year. So they've proved what can be achieved around us. But the final thing, and I think perhaps the real catalyst for uh, releasing the value that I'm, I'm trying to intimate here, is that we have an ongoing scoping study or PEA as we call it. Uh, it's been conducted on uh, Adumbi and just the open pit ounces. They're just over 3 million ounces. The valuation is out in only two months time. Uh, the second week in December, we're expecting it. And that will increase certainty. Plus it'll likely increase the interest from press and people like yourself. And I think importantly, investors and corporates alike. So it should be a very, very exciting few months coming as we look to unlock this value. Wow, this is extremely impressive, John. Can you tell us about the management at Longcore Gold, especially their past success in the mining sector? We love to know the people behind the deals. Sure. Well, look, if you want detail, of course, we have our website, www.longcore.com. You get further detail, but just a brief summary. I mentioned Arnie Kondrat, somebody I've known for a long time. He's now the executive chairman and uh, he holds 22% of the shares. He put the company together, but he's actually operated in the DRC for almost three decades. And so it's invaluable with his in-country experience. So as I mentioned, he put the portfolio together um, oh, about 13 years ago. Another person I'd mention is our president, uh, Peter Cowley. And uh, he's held top geological posts in multinational gold miners, such as Anglo, uh, Anglo Gold Ashanti. And he's found uh, over 30 million ounces in the type of geological terrain that we're operating uh, within. And I suppose I'm just touching on myself a little further, um, I've, I've mentioned I've kicked the tires on many projects in Africa and elsewhere in the world, while also getting involved in M&A and listing and equity, equity raisings, et cetera. So, you know, I think as a team, uh, for a small team and a small company, we have a heck of a lot of experience, which puts us in great stead as we're developing and looking to choose the right uh, decisions to release value for our uh, shareholders going forward. Fantastic. Now, can you tell us a little bit about what investors have to look forward to for the rest of 2021 as we come to an end and into 2022 and what some of the goals are that you guys have set for long core gold for 2022? Yeah, um, I suppose the dominant factor is that scoping study in early December 2021. And if it comes out with the sort of valuations that I, I, I like to think, then we really will be many multiples of our uh, market cap. So that should be transformational. And in many ways, it swamps the significance of many of the other uh, wonderful initiatives uh, in pure valuation terms. Um, but looking at other things, we believe we can push the ounces at the high grade uh, 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 Dumby, uh, both uh, perhaps in the pit uh, where we have 3.2 million ounces, but also underground. We've drilled down to around 600 meters and uh, we hope in the next six months, we're gonna put all that data together and get more ounces. And uh, we target in, in excess of 5 million, or sorry, towards 5 million ounces at, uh, at a Dumby and a, a couple of satellite deposits there. That puts us into tier one category. And when I say tier one, it's something Barrick throws out there, 5 million ounces plus. But remember the grade, the exceptional high grade that we're talking about versus our peer group there. So the economics should look really good as we develop. But it, ounces is the other thing. And then um, also we've been drilling close to surface and we hope to put our uh, resources into the next classification. Uh, we currently have inferred resources and we hope that half of those um, over a million ounces uh, will be put into indicated, which again, just helps with the, how people feel about your project. Um, and then um, looking into 2022, uh, we've got a numerous outstanding uh, targets. One in particular, Macapella is high grade and a lot of visible gold and already has 1.1 million ounces. It's uh, even higher grades than uh, Dumby. We perhaps might put a few holes in there and uh, some areas close to a Dumby we'd like to drill. So we have no shortage of targets, uh, but we're focusing on Dumby for the time being to release significant value. And then uh, obviously these can, we can look at uh, into 2022. One of the things that you said that really caught my attention, you guys have the potential to be put in tier one, yet you guys are still an 80 million market cap company. So a baby market cap with the potential to be a tier one gold miner. That is what we look for here on Rich TV Live. Companies that are undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed, that have explosive growth potential. So this is exciting for me, John. Now, we love to understand the fundamentals of a company here. 
Can you go through the capital structure of Longcore Gold for our viewers and how you planned and how you plan on attracting more institutional investment alongside more retail investors? Yeah, well, I suppose top line, 133 million shares outstanding and key management, including myself, uh, hold shares. I, I bought some a month or so ago when we got down below 70 cents. Um, uh, major holder of 22% is, uh, uh, is our executive chairman, uh, Chairman Arnie Kondrat. Wow. Then we have uh, Resolute uh, Gold uh, out of Australia. They're, they operate uh, gold mines in, uh, in West Africa. They hold 24%. And then Newmont have uh, been there since the early days of the company. They're holding uh, 5%. So we've got wow. some significant holders there. Um, primary listing is TSX we're on the OTC and uh, Frankfurt as, uh, as well. So those are the, the key elements there. Um, Institutional and uh, retail, um, it, it's a very interesting market. So we've raised equity twice in the last uh, nine months or so. We've been oversubscribed uh, each time, but we've done it ourselves, sort of in-house with a few friends friends and family uh, and old colleagues uh, helping out. Uh, we really uh, haven't been uh, supported by uh, brokers, even though the, the, you can tell the story is a pretty straightforward one and very close to, be, uh, to really coming to fruition. So I think we need to get brokers on board uh, to help us with the uh, institutional side. Ironically, a number of brokers have phoned me and said, what are you up to, John? Because I'm hearing from my institutional uh, investors that you've got a good story. So slowly we're getting traction there and we're going to continue. Obviously, a headline saying we've got a project of X million dollars um, after the scoping study, that too will get attention. So I think we're going to really hit headlines, which will get the institutional investors uh, in. I mean, ideally, if it was me, I'd like to get in before the PEA and scoping study. But sometimes, you know, maybe they're waiting for the scoping study. But I'm sure that'll bring in uh, both institutional and, uh, and retail. And then the other thing is uh, I'm very active uh, talking. I spoke at a conference the other day in uh, Beijing and uh, uh, speaking in London uh, coming up. I spoke with another one in the... U.S. to a bunch of journalists um, a couple of days ago. Uh, so I'm going to continue to, uh, to crank up the story um, if we can't get supported by other people, such as brokers. We have to do it ourselves. So I'm going to actively be doing. And of course, anything uh, on your side, Rich, uh, is much appreciated as well. It all uh, really just we need to get the story out there because I think it's a compelling story myself. Absolutely. We're going to do our best to tell your story. We love identifying early stage companies that have an opportunity to explode and you guys seem to fit the bill perfectly. Now, if there was one thing you would want people to know about Longcore Gold today, what would that be? Well, I think you can probably guess it. Uh, it appears that our inherent valuation at Adambi is huge versus our market cap of $80 million. That's, that's what we want people to, to understand. And, um, you know, don't necessarily have to believe what I'm saying. We've got a 43101 from a resource upgrade earlier in the year. There's some basic figures in there. You can use those and you can uh, scribble down on a, on a piece of paper, uh, five or six lines, and you'll get to the val significant valuations. So the figures are out there. It's not just me putting them, uh, you know, just telling me a, a company line, as it were. But of course, the upcoming PEA in December 2021 uh, will really uh, confirm that uh, inherent valuation. But as I said before, this is only the start of our discovery with many more ounces to come. We should add to our valuation and obviously hope we could add to our, our, um, to, to our whole momentum. What is the best way for investors to get in touch with the company if they have any questions? Yeah, well, I suppose there's two ways. Firstly, uh, you can join our, our news flow via our, our, our website. That's just for the news flow. So you can at least uh, get some of the uh, news coming out on our PA and drill holes. We've got some drill holes coming up soon, which should be good. And um, that's uh, one thing I would certainly recommend for some of your investors. And then you can contact us through various social media channels, uh, the obvious routes uh, um, that you, you're, you're very aware of. And you can check our website for, uh, for that conduit as well. Fantastic. I must remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, I do believe this is a company that is grossly undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. A small cap, baby market cap, junior gold miner with an 80 million market cap with the potential to be a tier one gold miner. I love it. Thank you so much for your time today. The CEO 
of Longcore Gold, John Barker. Rich, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Love to invite you back anytime you have any big breaking news or anything you want to discuss. We love to have our community heavily involved in the Longcore Gold story as you guys move forward with your business plan. Thank you for your time today. And for those of you guys that are watching, if you're not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring in the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have a nice day.